Welcome to Retro Arcade Reviews. My name is John, and in this episode, we will be reviewing the arcade classic G-Lock Air Battle. From the godfather of arcade production comes G-Lock, an air combat game that was developed by Sega's AM2 in 1990. This game is one of the most memorable air combat games out there. Now, it wasn't the game itself, but rather the experience of playing the game that made it memorable. You see, there were three different cabinets for the game. You had your standard stand-up cabinet, a sit-down version, and the amazing R360. Now I never played on the standard stand-up, but I did play on the sit-down and the R360. The sit-down version was pretty amazing and what you come to expect from Sega's AM2 games. But the R360 would push the immersive experience that the AM2 games gave you into the stratosphere. You would get in, put the shoulder harness down, and the machine was able to spin you around 360 degrees. It was so cool. It was like a theme park ride and I never experienced anything like that before in the arcades. The thing is that the game was crazy expensive. I don't remember the exact price of the R360, but I do remember that I only had enough for like one game, and that one game lasted for about a minute, but that was a memorable minute. Playing the game itself years later, I realized that the game is not really all that difficult, depending on the setting. It's just that the majority of gamers only had enough for about one playthrough, so it was kind of hard to determine anything about the game. In this game, you take control of an A8M5 Mark II fighter jet, otherwise known as Zeke. You have to dogfight your way through 8 missions and that's pretty much it. There's no other real story to it. And if you're familiar with AM2 games, that's pretty much how it goes with the exception of a certain few. At your disposal, you have cannons and missiles. You can use your cannons to shoot down enemies or use your missiles by targeting and locking onto them. Each stage has a time limit in which you have to complete the mission's objectives so you can get a time extension and advance to the next stage. It is pretty much just shoot a certain number of enemies enemies before the time runs out. The game is primarily a first person shooter that zooms out to third person when an enemy is locked onto you, but just perform a barrel roll a couple of times to lose them. The barrel roll is done quickly by tapping left or right twice. Now according to sources, G-Lock is a spiritual sequel to Afterburner 1 and 2. The thing is that people were more familiar with the Afterburner titles and less familiar with G-Lock. As stated earlier, I never played the standard upright cabinet. I never really remember even running into it once, but I do remember playing the sit down and the R360 cabinets and that's because G-Lock was pretty much in very very large arcades. Not your everyday arcades, I mean your arcades that would have games with decked out cabinets like Prop Cycle, Wave Runner, Alpine Racer, etc. Kind of like Dave and Buster's today but that's because G-Lock specialty cabinets were huge and I could imagine how expensive the cabinets must have been. Even though Afterburner did have its specialty cabinets, I do remember seeing and playing the standard upright cabinets in in numerous places compared to G-Lock. Fun fact, the name G-Lock is an acronym for G-Force Loss of Consciousness. It refers to pilots losing consciousness from excessive and sustaining G-Forces which drains blood away from the brain, depriving the brain of oxygen or in other words causing cerebral hypoxia. English poet and philosopher Samuel Taylor Coleridge suggested that if a writer could infuse a human interest and a semblance of truth into a fantastic tale, the reader would suspend judgment concerning the implausibility of the narrative. When you play games like OutRun, where you're driving along a coast on a bright sunny day, or climbing into a cockpit of an F-14 Tomcat, it's not hard to suspend fantasy from reality. You are fully aware that you are playing a game, but it's not the game itself, rather the experience of having the steering wheel violently shake when you go off-road, maneuvering a high-speed bike, or having your body thrusted back and forth in a makeshift cockpit which really exercised one's suspension and disbelief. If only for a brief moment. And that was the beauty and the magic of the AM2 games. It was kind of like make-believe for all audiences, young and old. G-Lock was ported over to the Commodore 64, Amstrad CPC, ZX Spectrum, the Amiga, Sega Master System, the Genesis, and the Game Gear. I really don't know if it was ported over to any next-gen systems or part of any arcade compilations, but the real magic is not in the ports, but in the arcade cabinets. And I say, if you ever run into them, why don't you hop into the cockpit, strap in, take off and let me know what you think.